welcome to this week's video and this week i show you how i got tricked just kidding i picked up this uh little chair it was free i thought i just had to do a quick fix on this arm here and get it reattached but turns out it was missing an entire chunk of wood and this whole thing is very ornate and carved so needless to say it has been sitting in my storage for quite a while because i don't know how to carve wood <laughs> and uh anyways so we're gonna try and do that this week i hope you guys enjoy these types of videos because i seem to be continuously putting out the repairs so i'm just fitting this in cleaning out all the old glue and old pieces of wood that are stuck in the joints and just everywhere i'm just trying to clean it out and figure out what i need to do because like i said i've never done a repair like this before and I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, but if I ever came upon this again, I would obviously do stuff differently as this was my first go. <laughs> so I'm kind of trying to inspect the pieces that I do have to figure out what I need to do to repair it. So it wasn't a clean break, so I'm gonna have to fix that. And I'm just kind of grabbing my scrap wood that I have around the shop and trying to figure out what I want to use. This was a piece of pine. I decided it was way too light and just a completely different. I don't have this kind of wood in my shop so I ended up using this piece of maple because it was a little bit closer in the hardness of the wood and closer to the width that I would need for the finished arm. So that's what I ended up going with. I just cut off a block to the height that I needed a little bit more because I'm going to cut it down and I can't really take measurements for this because everything is curved and angled and everything so here I'm just trying to line up the little dowel that's in there, the angle of the dowel and then where the dowel comes in on the top and bottom sides of it. So I'm just using a pencil marking it out so that I kind of have those marked out on the block so that I can then go in with my drill and get that same angle and get it lined up on there. And then since this block was just a little bit too deep, I just made a small cut with my miter saw and got it to the depth that I needed to fit in the chair to where it was sunk in back behind the edge. And now I can just hammer that in and it does fit really snugly and it's a great depth. I'm pretty happy with the fit right there. It was kind of a pain to get the piece in and out, but I feel like that's a good thing. So now I'm adding the top part of the arm, trying to figure out how it's going to fit in perfectly for the glue up on top and then what angle it needs to come down at so that I can cut the top of the block there to match the angle of the arm. And I am going to have to make a smooth cut on that arm because like I said it wasn't an even break. So I'm going to make a flush cut on the arm and then I will match that angle up to the top of the block and make sure that it's cut to size. So it's just kind of messing around with it and trying to figure out what I need to do. While I have it there, I'm also making those pencil marks so that I know how wide the top part needs to be so that I can trim those down later. I'm just trying to make sure that I have all the angles that I need because again, we're gonna have to kind of carve this piece of wood a bit. I'm just using this scrap piece of wood here to help me figure out the angle. So here you can see the curve that I'll need to put in the wood around the back side and the little well that I'll have to carve into the front side. And I'm just using my chisel and then I also have just a little wood carving set of blades. I will link some in the description. I don't know that it really matters. I didn't get like professional ones or anything because let's be real, I'm not gonna be doing this every day. Although I did find it enjoyable just because I like doing repairs I mean, I almost likely have to sharpen all of these. And I got 
all of this stuff just at my local hardware store, so nothing too crazy. But I'm just taking my chisel, going around, following the angles, getting them all in. This took me a bit. I wasn't very smooth with this. Like I said, this is my very first time, so uh, you can tell, right? You can definitely tell. So now that I had that about where I wanted it, it's not perfect, let me be clear, but it's good enough. So I'm using my high glue and putting it on all the glueable surface that I can find, and then also on the block that I'm putting in. And then we'll glue up the back of the arm as well. And then I'm just going to fit it together as best I can, get it as tight as possible, and make sure that all of my glue has the best contact that I can get it. Then of course I'm going to be clamping it into place, and you need a few clamps for this stuff. You just kind of try and do what you can with what you have. These weren't a perfect clamp up, but it was doing its job and it's very secure now, thankfully. If you guys don't watch Tom Johnson, that guy is amazing and he actually cuts blocks for clamping and it is incredible. Now that I have the top secure, I'm going to go in and dowel the top front part of the arm into the new block that we just put in. So I didn't know this when I started it, but the other arm also has a dowel in the exact same spot. So I'm guessing, I mean, this chair's had several repairs that I could find on it anyways, but that was another one that I found and I thought it was really cool. I was like, oh good. So someone else has already done this to the other side. But so I just drilled out a hole to match my dowel size and made sure that it was all cleaned out, made sure I did my dry fit so that I knew it was gonna work well. And then I can glue that all up in there and trim it down with my pole saw. Now we're gonna move on to a little sculpting. So I'm using this epoxy. It is a two part, it comes in a tube. It is also known as like a Tootsie Roll. It's really great stuff. It's super, super strong. So I felt comfortable using this. You just cut off the amount that you need. You mix it together until it's one color. And then I'm just going to mold this and fill in any gaps and make sure that it's kind of the same shape as the other arm and I'm constantly just like looking back and forth between the two arms making sure that it's of a, a similar situation and just adding it on there. I did have to go back and mix up three different rounds of this which is fine because I don't want to mix up too much. I want to make sure that I have the right amount so I'm, it's not going to waste. It dries pretty quickly and I didn't want to just waste a bunch of it.
And since I already had the epoxy out, I just used a little to fill in the little chunk of wood that was missing at the top part of the arm from the original break. And then I'm just getting it on, smoothing it out. And then the stuff sands pretty easily, but if you're gonna do any carving on it, as I'm gonna kind of try and do, you want to do it before it's fully dry. You don't wanna do it right when you put it on, it will just peel up, but give it a bit, let it kind of set, and then you can kind of shape it and mold it and do all the things that you need to before it's fully cured. And then you can leave it overnight and then sand the next day. Well, after all of that, I finally get to clean it. So I'm just using my Chalk Mountain cleaner. This chair wasn't terribly dirty. It was just mostly dusty from what I did to it. So I'm just giving it a good clean, wiping it down. And then going back and looking at the arm, there are just a few spots that I wasn't happy with. So I took my little bowed carving tool there and I'm trying to clean it up a little better than what I had it because it just, it wasn't, it wasn't there yet. This stuff, like I said, is much easier to carve out when it's partially set, not when it is all the way set because it is very hard. So keep that in mind if you have to make a repair like this. And hooray, we get to move on to paint. So these are the six colors I'm using. It is to match a previous paint job, so I already knew where I was going with them. The base color is going to be Iron Gate. That's all over the entire chair. I'm not worried about blending on this first coat. The chair is going to be very, very easy to blend because everything is just a small section. So super, super easy paint job on this. And really fun because it has all the awesome carvings at the top. And when I start on the carvings on the back, I'm not making these perfect. I'm adding specific colors to each area and then I will layer in more colors. And I'm just gonna kinda let you watch this because it doesn't matter how perfect it is because it's going to also blend in with the rest of the chair. I don't need any definitive lines. This is a fully blended piece. I just want each individual carving can to kind of stand out on its own and you can really do that with layers without having to make things perfect. So I'll kind of keep this a little bit slower. It's still sped up, but I'm hoping that you can still kind of see what I'm doing. I'll add a little color to each one and then when I go back through, I'll blend those out so they're not harsh and perfect. I want them to be blended out, but in the end you can totally see how everything is. And don't be afraid to add water if your paint starts sticking or anything like that. Just add a little spray and you can go back and do it. And I'll take my iron gate and I can go through and clean up around all the edges and it's back to good again.
Now I'll go into some sped up blending because this part's super easy and I know you've seen me do it a lot. It's just adding in a color and then blending it out with that brush and then going back with my original brush and feathering out the edges. You'll notice my color placement is pretty much based on the chair. Like where it has the big bowed out sections, I'll add a highlight color there. And then any of the recessed sections, I'll kind of leave that more muted and subdued to kind of add a little bit more to the cool shape of the chair. So here's a little close up of all of the stuff. You can see there's tons of different layers on everything. There's no crazy definitive lines. It's just going with layers. Then after my first coat of paint, I just was not happy with my carving. I noticed a few kind of hollowed out areas that I didn't like. So I just took some air dry clay and filled them in and then smoothed them out. And then I can sand over that once it dries and then go over and paint it so that it's a much smoother surface. And then I won't have my eye twitch that I get when things aren't perfect. So I'm going to include this really quick because I think it's important. Since I have to paint over this again and it was a blended section, I can do the same blend on this because I have the iron gate. It's the same all over color in the bend of the arm at the top there. So iron gate matches iron gate. It doesn't have to blend in anything. So I can actually fix a blend in this one spot without ruining the entire piece or having to go over and try and blend out an entire area because I do keep those sections of solid color that I know I only have to make it to that solid color for it to match the rest of the piece. Once everything's dry, I'm just going to seal it with my satin poly and we're gonna do some more detailed work when we're finished. However, if you seal your piece first and let that dry, then any detail work that you might mess up on you can wipe back and start over again. So I always think sealing before you're gonna do any extra work is a great idea because then you don't have to fix anything. You can just, you don't have to go back on your paint job at all. You can just, you know, pick up from where you just messed up that one little spot. So I'm using a foam brush here. 
And then I also have a small detail brush to go over and pick up any extra poly that's being left behind because this piece is so ornate. You'll get little poly just gloops and everything everywhere. So I just wanna make sure that I'm picking those up and not letting them dry on my piece and just following along with the small detail brush when I'm finished with this larger foam brush. The foam brush is nice because it contours over everything and leaves a really, really smooth finish, but it does leave behind excess poly. So tiny brush for the win. Now we can do the grand part, which is adding in all the gold gilts. So this was the color that was on the original desk that I'm copying off of. So I just mixed up the same color. You can use glazing dusts and mixed in with poly. That's what this is. Whatever color you want. The stuff's awesome. I've had several in my last few videos because I'm kind of in a mood with it right now. But so I'm just following along all the detail lines with a small brush and just gonna just gild it just gild everything we're lucky I didn't dip the chair if we're being honest Okay, this is something that I tried and I think it's going to work out really well. So I added more poly and water to my gold glazing medium to really, really thin it out. And then I'm going over the chair because the chair is fabric and it's going to be at a desk where makeup and things like that will be used. And I want to make sure that it can be cleaned off. And that kind of stuff likes to soak into fabric. So this is giving the fabric a protective layer that can be wiped back if needed. There is shimmer in it, which I think only adds to it, so I'm not mad about it. Um, I did dampen the fabric before I started doing this so that it is really absorbed into the fibers. And after having had it sit in my shop for a few days, it feels great. You can feel that there is just kind of a little bit of protection on there, but it's working great. The fabric is still super pliable and all is right with the world. Oh hi, Taryn here, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this chair. So it is the matching chair matching that will go to my sister-in-law's vanity desk that we did a few videos back. I will of course link it in the description box so you can check it out. Um, it has a very similar paint job. That's kind of the beauty of doing this whole YouTube thing is that I can go back and see what I did and create a matching something to go with it. So I really think that's awesome because I probably would have just guessed a lot if I didn't have the video. So I mean, you know, bonuses all the way around. So uh, thanks so much to all the new subscribers that I have. You guys are so, so wonderful. I'm so thankful for you. And of course, to all of my OG subscribers, I'm just so blown away by your guys' support and just thank you so much. Okay, let me give you some photos of this and then, uh, I gotta get it to my sister-in-law. Okay, see you next week.